The year was 2008. India was aiming for the moon. After years of launching satellites into Earth orbit, the Indian Space Research Organization was ready to take the next giant leap with its first lunar probe, Chandrayaan-1. The ambitious orbiter was equipped with 11 state-of-the-art instruments, five Indian instruments and six from other countries, of which two were most important, the Moon Impact Probe, MIPI of ISRO, and the Moon Mineralogy Mapper, M3, of NASA, designed to study the Moon's surface and environment in unprecedented detail. If successful, Chandrayaan could help reveal the Moon's South Pole mysteries and bolster India's place among the spacefaring nations. The big day finally arrived on October 22nd at the Satish Dhawan Space Center. Countdown clock ticked away as technicians scurried about, preparing the powerful Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle or PSLV for launch. Three, two, one. We have ignition. The rocket thundered upwards, trailing a plume of fire as Chandrayaan 1 started its journey of nearly 400,000 kilometers to the moon. The mission team watched tensely as the spacecraft separated and disappeared from view. Over the next two weeks, Chandrayaan slowly cruised through the void of space. Despite a few hiccups like sensor malfunctions and static buildup, India's first moon probe persevered. On November 8th, the moon loomed large in Chandrayaan's view. It had arrived. Firing its engines, the spacecraft braked into lunar orbit, a historic moment for India's space program. On November 18, 2008, Chandrayaan's Moon Impact Probe was released towards Moon's South Pole. Mission Control, MIP Detached, Descent Trajectory Nominal, 20 minutes to impact. In a dramatic maneuver, Chandrayaan's Moon Impact Probe separated and drifted towards the Moon's South Pole. As it descended, scientists monitored its instruments with excitement and trepidation. Finally, contact lost. The probe had crashed into the surface as planned. It detected evidence of water in 650 mass spectra readings during its descent. This astonishing data overturned the long-held notion of a bone-dry moon and unequivocally confirmed the presence of lunar water for the first time. The implications were tremendous. Accessible stores of water ice opened up the possibility of sustained human habitation on the moon. Harvesting lunar water could also enable spacecraft fueling stations, expanding humanity's reach into deep space. But soon, Chandrayaan's success was thrown into controversy. When Chandrayaan's moon impact probe crashed into the lunar surface, kicking up an ejecta plume, M3 onboard Chandrayaan-1's orbiter analyzed this impact debris cloud and detected water ice. Before ISRO could announce his findings, NASA released data from Chandrayaan-1's M3 instrument. M3's orbital measurements verified the presence of lunar ice. Debate erupted in the scientific community over who should receive credit for the discovery. NASA scientists emphasized that their data was collected first and was more conclusive proof. But ISRO argued the Moon Impact Probe provided the first unequivocal on-site confirmation of water on the lunar surface. Tensions rose as both sides defended their findings in the media and scientific forums. Headline after headline trumpeted the brewing conflict between the American and Indian space agencies. Accusations of stealing thunder and national bias muddied the waters. Finally, after months of dispute, a consensus began to emerge that both Chandrayaan-1 and the M3 made major contributions. But the real victor was science itself. Chandrayaan had achieved 95% of its goals, and India now possessed a foundation for future lunar exploration. On August 29, 2009, communication was lost forever. After Chandrayaan-1 mission, ISRO was determined to build on its success for an even more ambitious sequel. In 2008, the Indian Space Research Organization approved Chandrayaan-2, a mission to demonstrate a soft landing and roving capabilities on the lunar surface. The Chandrayaan-2 mission was equipped with an orbiter, lander, and rover configuration. The orbiter weighed 2,379 kilo and carried eight advanced scientific instruments to study the lunar surface from orbit, but the highlights were the Vikram lander and Pragyan rover. Vikram was designed to execute a soft landing between two craters at the challenging lunar South Pole region. Nestled within Vikram was the six-wheeled Pragyan rover, which could traverse 500 meters on the surface and perform on-site chemical analysis. After years of delays between 2013-2019, Chandrayaan-2 finally launched on July 22, 2019. 
Aboard the powerful GSLV Mark III rocket, the spacecraft launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center amidst cheering crowds. After a flawless 16-minute flight, Chandrayaan-2 was injected into Earth orbit and began its long journey to the moon. Over the next weeks, a series of orbital maneuvers gradually raised the craft's orbit until it escaped Earth's gravity. The liquid engine fired skillfully to insert Chandrayaan-2 into lunar transfer trajectory. Two months later, Chandrayaan-2 arrived at its destination. Firing its thrusters, the spacecraft braked into lunar orbit on August 20, 2019, another proud milestone for India's space program. From here, the Vikram lander and Pragyan rover's challenging journey would begin. The historic day arrived on September 2nd. Vikram separated from the orbiter and began its 14-minute powered descent. As Vikram neared the landing site, tension gripped ISRO's mission control room. This was the make-or-break moment for India's moon dreams. Minutes ticked by as telemetry trickled back. Sealantly, Vikram activated its various stages, reducing thrust and speed as planned. Isro watched and hoped. Suddenly, loss of signal. Contact had been lost when Vikram was just 2.1 kilometers from touchdown. The control room sat in stunned silence, trying to comprehend what had happened. Eyes fixed in shocked disbelief at screens flashing, no data. Faces that had minutes ago burned with optimism, now drained of color. How could this be happening when Triumph was so close? After an agonizing pause, technicians spurred into action, desperately trying to re-establish communication. But the deafening static only confirmed their nightmare. Vikram was lost. Chaos erupted as some scientists buried faces in hands while others frantically checked systems for answers. Had the lander crashed? Was all their work over in an instant? The project director Kailas Avadivu Sivan made his way to the broadcasting desk, shoulders slumped in sorrow. Clearing his throat, he announced the devastating news to the nation, tuned in expectantly. As his voice cracked, tears welled up in eyes nationwide. The communication from the lantern to ground station was lost. The scene of ISRO chairman K. Sivan crying on Prime Minister Modi's shoulder went viral across India. Dr. K. Sivan ko gale lagate huye, peet thap thapate huye, honsla badate huye, manne pradhan mantri Narendra Modi. After Vikram's devastating failure, Sivan approached Modi heartbroken. As Sivan apologized through tears, the PM enveloped him in a consoling embrace, urging him to not lose hope. Despite the setback, Modi emphasized there is still potential for success. The emotional moment, captured on video, resonated with the nation's disappointment, but also resilience. In homes and public squares, cheers of anticipation turned to wails of disappointment. But after the initial shock subsided, resilient hope emerged. Not all was lost. The orbiter could still achieve some objectives. Later that night, exhausted but determined faces worked to gather clues from precious telemetry received before Vikram went dark. India's first moon landing may have ended in tragedy, but lessons would be learned to try again. It was a sweltering July morning in 2023 at the Satish Dhawan Space Center. Thousands gathered to witness history in the making. The launch of Chandrayaan-3, India's attempt to redeem the devastating failure of its previous moon mission. Four years after Chandrayaan-2's lander Vikram tragically crashed mere feet from the lunar surface, ISRO was ready to try again. The new Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft sat on the launch pad, carrying a propulsion module, lander and rover, designed to achieve India's dreams of a soft lunar landing. The lander was named Vikram-2, the ambitious mission aimed to demonstrate a precision landing near the lunar south pole, where hidden caches of water ice could support future exploration. To avoid past mistakes, the spacecraft's enhanced design incorporated learnings from Vikram's failure, with updated navigation algorithms, sensors, and cameras for hazard avoidance. Success today would land India in an elite club of moon landing nations. At 9.13 a.m., the countdown completed, and Chandrayaan-3 blasted off aboard the powerful LVM-3 rocket. As the spacecraft thundered into cloudy skies trailing plumes of fire, raucous cheers erupted at mission control. Another giant leap for India's space dreams had begun. In deep space, a parallel lunar mission was unfolding. Russia had launched its Luna 25 probe in August, also targeting the South Pole for the first ever landing in this treacherous region rife with shadows and debris. Luna 25 took a faster direct trajectory and entered lunar orbit first. The lander separated on August 21st for its descent. 
Russian scientists watched anxiously as the lander activated its thrusters and began dropping until telemetry suddenly cut out. Silence gripped the control room. Haunted memories surged of India's own crash landing failure. After years of work, Luna 25 had suffered the same devastating fate mere feet from the surface. Russia had missed its chance to win this modern space race. This was a tragic loss for science. The data and discoveries from Luna 25's attempted South Pole landing were a blow to space exploration. Its failure represented lost knowledge and research that could have advanced humanity's understanding of the moon's mysteries. Luna 25's demise stood as a reminder of the challenges ahead for Chandrayaan-3. Space is supremely difficult, and for science to leap forward, perseverance was paramount. That same day, Chandrayaan-3 successfully established contact with the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter already there, albeit weeks behind Luna 25. On August 23rd, the defining moment arrived. The lander Vikram-2 separated perfectly from Chandrayaan-3's propulsion module. This was Vikram reborn, India's second chance at redemption. As Vikram-2 began its meticulous descent, cameras and sensors fed a dizzying stream of data for course corrections. In mission control, tension was palpable. Haunted memories of the past crash loomed large. But Vikram-2 persevered flawlessly through each carefully orchestrated phase. The pace was painstakingly slow. Each second carried immense stakes, faces tensed and hands clasped in breathless anticipation. Beads of nervous sweat slid down faces that hadn't blinked for minutes. Vikram-2 activated its final descent thrusters. Just two kilometer left. One kilometer. 500 meters. This was their destiny. Years of sleepless nights, endless calculations and simulations had led to this moment. 100 meters. 75 meters. Came the announcement. After an eternity, the words they dreamed of. Touchdown confirmed. Vikram 2 had landed safely near the South Pole. As the realization hit, euphoria erupted in mission control. Against the odds, India had achieved its moonshot. Her scientists had grasped their holy grail. This was a giant triumph for the nation's dreams of space exploration and a glowing testimony to ISRO's innovation. Around India, citizens celebrated with fireworks and chants. Their pride and patience rewarded. Chandrayaan-3 fulfilled ISRO's vision of touching down on the moon, redeeming Vikram's loss through sheer determination. As the first ever mission to soft land in the lunar south pole's treacherous terrain, Chandrayaan-3 opened up new discoveries about lunar water for India. Now Pragyan-2 could begin roving across the alien landscape, analyzing minerals, and sending back invaluable data. Chandrayaan-3 had landed India in the elite club of moon-faring nations, a historic feat destined to be eulogized for generations.